And uh, Pastor Jonathan, why don't you explain a little bit more of the vision of CMC and where you think it's going to be going in the next few years? Well, our vision is twofold. Um, um, the underlying thing is that Jesus deserves to be worshipped in every village in the world. And um, I think it's been 2,000 years. Uh, that's really long enough. We need to make a change in that problem uh, by helping to put a church in every village or every neighborhood if you're in a city. And I became really convicted of this uh, in 2002, I believe. I was in, I was in Southern Late Day and I had an experience that was unusual. I was uh, in there uh, after a typhoon. People used to blame me for bringing typhoons. I never did. I just happened to come in right after a typhoon. And uh, the place I was in was a banana growing area and the trees were flattened to the ground. It was desolate, muddy. And I was in a car and uh, thinking a very American thought thinking um, this is not a good place for a travel brochure and I chuckled to myself and I was 52 years old at the time and for the first time in 52 years uh, I had a direct answer from God to a thought which was not directed at him and his response to me was a whisper and it was gentle but he said uh, nobody wants these people, but I do. So I had an immediate problem in that I fell over in the seat, was unable to sit up, and I was also unable to breathe. Uh, it was as if God was sitting on my chest. And I guess you could say I was sobbing, but there was no sound because there was no breath. And when I finally caught my breath, it came in in a rush, like this, and the Lord spoke to me a second sentence. He said, not only that, I'm very upset that it's taken so long. So for that point, my thinking became uh, focused on the idea that for God, this problem of our human separation from him is really personal. Uh, all that I had known from our Germanic theological system about our legal separation and how the cross uh, satisfies the demands of a just God remains true. But for me, it became a personal involvement with the God of the universe who lives in a, excuse me, kind of a constant agony related to our condition. And so, as a result, I don't see a downside in bringing as many people as possible to him. Uh, issues of quality aside, which are certainly important, we want to make good disciples and have real revival in churches and real solid foundations being laid. It's a commission. It's not something I'd, I'd sought for myself, but it's something that we need to do together because of this urgency in the spirit that's there. That urgency is only tempered by the knowledge that God has a bunch of other people doing his work and I'm not the only guy preaching that will bring the, uh, the people to him and that the kingdom of God and, and the people worshiping Jesus is the most important thing. Really once we have this vision we need to push it forward and do everything we can because we, we really do have a, a limited time. So that's, that's our vision in a nutshell. A church in every village. The simple methodology is the pastors in every locale or other Christian leaders taking responsibility in the spirit for the, for the people around them and the places around them. And unifying, coming together, uh, covenanting together and doing the work of the kingdom. It's simple, it's transferable, and it's sustainable with local resources to a very high degree.
Thank you, Pastor Jonathan. I've, I've heard your story so many times, and every time you say it, it just moves me as if I've heard it the first time.